trying to say you got a big head, man. Like it or not, with Benjamin Dixon starts now. Get her on camera right now. Get her on camera right now. Make sure America sees what she was just doing. Good morning and welcome to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth. And not care who doesn't like it. James, we're cutting you out of that process. <laughs> We try. <laughs> I got it. I've been practicing. What are y'all talking about? Okay. I'm ready. All right. One more time. Here we go. Ready, Welcome ready. to Like It or Not. Where we're free to tell the truth. And not care who doesn't like it. I hate you, James. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, that everybody. It. Damn. <laughs> it was it. It was it. It was, it was, like it. It was a, just delayed. Like it was a 30 delayed. second delay, but that, that's okay. Welcome, everybody, <laughs> to, across all the platforms watching us. Rebecca, how you doing this morning? James, how you doing, man? I'm doing okay. Um, I'm doing okay. Look, because it's always a story. Just know oh. that every morning I'm going to start with a story for you guys. It's going to be a story. <laughs> every every single oh. morning. So um, last night. Oh boy. I like, I found myself talking in my sleep, uh, but I was having like a full conversation with my mom and I'm like. Oh, okay. 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 I'm sleeping though, but I, I can hear myself talking and I guess I was dreaming talking to my mother, but I can hear myself like, and my mom was just like, good night. Love you. And I was like, love you too, girl. Then I got up like, girl, if you don't go to sleep, you know, I was, <laughs> people don't think I'm crazy, but that happened. <laughs> I really I think quarantine has it's affected me um, in how I sleep and just how I am because I'm like literally home talking to myself all the time. I think that's like <laughs> that's a thing for me in my sleep now. <laughs> you talk to yourself so much in, in the daytime that you're talking to yourself at night. Listen, you got to keep yourself company somehow. This is the pandemic is affecting exactly. all of us in a, in, a, in a lot of ways. So uh, yeah. no no shame here. You know, no shame here at all. James, how you doing, man? Did you talk in your sleep last night? <laughs> Um, I didn't talk in my sleep, but I heard myself snoring. That's like a nightly <laughs> now, so. Everything's good though. It's about the same. That's about the same. I've heard myself snore before. Uh, I've mastered the art. Knock on wood. I'm not talking in my sleep because you just don't right. do that when you get it's to a certain scary. age. You just well, don't. I wasn't. Because yeah. you never know what you're going to dream about and what you be talking about in your sleep. Mm, like, I, I, this is I, true. I, 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 I've got no time. It could get me. It, it could really get me in can. trouble. Yes, no. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna talk about anything in my sleep, it's gonna be about the goodness of Jesus and all. He, I'm, I, I'm like, I'm gonna make sure I'm yeah. thinking about. I'm gonna be thinking about TD Jakes and sermons and, and 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 the revolution. We'll think about the revolution. Like if I if you catch me talking in my sleep, I would say something like "Workers of the world unite." That's what I'm gonna say. But uh, anyway, um, I can't live dangerously like you, Rebecca. So <clears throat> listen. Well, I sleep alone sometimes. So most times. <laughs> I. Okay. I, yeah. Look, you got ain't that about business? <laughs> hey, look, no, but seriously, um, I had a, I had a good night's sleep though. <laughs> it's it, it's raining here in um Atlanta and yeah. or look, uh, cause who well, it's raining here in Atlanta. Uh, a lot of right. people are on the streets. Um, it was supposed to rain more than it was this morning. It was supposed to be like a freeze yeah. uh situation, but it, yeah. it it's not raining like that right now. Right. Like. It was so pretty for a second. I'm looking yeah. out the window now. Now it's gotten like it doesn't know if it wants to be a, a rainy day or a sunshiny day. But, right. but you know, oh, yeah, but it's the clouds cold. are coming in. The clouds it are coming is, in. It definitely. is cold. That said, I mean, it is a sunshiny day across America, across sunshiny the day. Ac across the planet. Um, dare I say across across the universe? <laughs> I I believe that it is a wonderful day Thanks for way, people who love humanity yesterday I they heard oh, sorry ben um, like um, I, I, ben was trying, I'm, I'm trying ben, to i apologize because i don't like when you when y'all do that to me but Dwayne just cracked us up and I, that's Dwayne got to make sure his mic listen Dwayne, you got to make sure your microphone is on so people don't think we're you right. know, hearing things because <laughs> 
because Dwayne does be cracking us up in the background. Uh, you know, and Dwayne, I can always find a way to segue. There was the one thing that I used to like about um, uh, this particular radio show. It was that um, there was a, a voice that always came in uh, called Snurdly, I think the guy's name was. You know, I never liked what he had to say and I hated the, the show itself because it was so repugnant and so disgusting. Um, and yesterday, that man died, Rush Limbaugh, who has been the bane of humanity. I'm sorry, I normally, I normally fret when lives are lost, but this man was evil. Don't take my word for it. I'm not even sure what clip we have first, but I don't care which clip we have first. I guarantee you it will demonstrate why, as we remember Rush Limbaugh, we remember him as the person who was the proverbial shit stain on America. Let's look at the first clip. What does it say about the college co-ed Susan Fluke, who goes before a congressional committee and essentially says that she must be paid to have sex? What does that make her? Mm. It makes her a slut, right? My God. It makes her a prostitute. She wants to be paid to have sex. She's having so much sex, she can't afford the contraception. She wants you and me and the taxpayers to pay her to have sex. What does that make us? We're the pimps. <sighs> My God. The Johns. That's right. We would be the Johns. No! We're not the John. Well... Uh, well, uh, yeah, that's right. Pimp's not the right word. Okay, so she's not a slut. She's round-heeled. I take... Jesus. <laughs> what? I never this heard that. Right, this this right, is Rush Limbaugh. What? Now he's, he's talking about healed. he's he's talking about Sandra Fluke. And if you remember uh, a couple of years ago, she testified. Uh, she's a Georgetown law student who testified before Congress uh, about the importance of health insurance covering birth control. And to that, he said, this is a woman who is a slut. That's just the beginning. Let's go to the next clip as we celebrate um, a day without this type of evil on the face of the planet. Now, I would prefer that we all could live forever. But if we're going to live and be this disgusting, you have to understand when people, you know, dance a jig on your grave. In 2013 discussion over white guilt, Rush Limbaugh weighed in um, with this saying, if any race of people should not have guilt about slavery, it's Caucasians. Now, um, I, I seriously. This is the type of stuff that we're dealing with. He said in 2012, Rush Limbaugh said uh, that Bane, the villain in Batman's movie, is an international swipe at Mitt Romney. Now, let's see this one. I want to take a look at this one. Play this clip. Right to protest. We're supposed to be horrified by the protesters. Meanwhile, four years of a coup launched in the Oval Office of Barack Obama no, sir. to overturn the election results of 2016 and not a single word of concern about the potential damage oh, okay. to our Constitution. This is, this is. No, they were just utter denials. We didn't do it. I don't know what you're talking about. Trump's got to go. Trump's poison. So we, a lot of irony out there, and there's a lot of people calling for the end of violence. There's a lot of conservatives, social media, who say that any violence or aggression at all is unacceptable, regardless of the circumstances. I'm glad Sam Adams... Thomas Paine, the actual Tea Party guys, the men at Lexington and Concord didn't feel that way. They used to go. Now, I, I gotta give. I, I have to give context for that one. This that was a different video, but this one was one of the most recent ones where he's talking about the aftermath of the January sixth incident. And where the rest of us see a bunch of aggrieved white conservatives storming the Capitol on behalf of white supremacy. He is trying to tie those people on his dying days. Now, mind you, 
He's trying to tie the evil that we saw on January 6th to the founding of this country, justifying the violence that they used on January 6th. Now, we got a long catalog of stuff. He's he had an entire series that he did back in the 80s where he mocked and celebrated the deaths of people who were infected with HIV. Right. He's been doing this evil thing for a, for the entirety of my life. He had an entire series where he referred to Barack Obama as Barack, the magic Negro. Right. Um, and, and this is a man who was committed to his bigotry, even unto death. That video that we just saw was in the last two months. Listen, Rebecca James, I got more clips. But if I was that close to death, I would not use my time being a bigoted, racist asshole for fear that I, you know, maybe maybe hell is real. And if it is, we know where Rush Limbaugh is this morning. Rebecca. <clears throat> I don't speak on people who die. Listen, but um, <clears throat> trying to be in, trying to I ain't be. Got in no, listen, I listen, got no, listen. No, seriously I... though, this man has, um, you know, just knowing what he's been behind all these years. The fact that we've, the fact that America opened its doors, gave him a platform, made him as big as he is. Um, yeah, yeah. It 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 lets us know that racism was and still will be at the forefront of everything. It's so sad when people get to celebrate somebody's passing. Imagine Ooh. dying and people are celebrating. It's a celebration that you died. Um, you're that evil of a person. And, you know, calling somebody, having a whole segment about somebody being the magic Negro, um, mm. attacking people for their sexualities, um, mm. you know, just demeaning people. That's been mm. your brand. That's been his brand, you know, from since he began uh, calling women sluts and those kind of mm. things. He's just, Come and out. this is the language. This is just as bad as Donald Trump was. This mm. is who Donald Trump is. These people exactly. are two peas in a pod. So um, it's it, the fact that people are celebrating uh, his death. It says a lot about who he was and what his legacy will be for the. I'm not celebrating his death. I'm celebrating the fact that that eagle is no longer on the planet. Yes. People, no, people are really celebrating his death, though. I mean, they're having okay, whole... Okay, so let me, and, and this is so horrible, because we have Congressman Ro Khanna. Let me, let me, say, I'm going to save the rest of this segment until after <laughs> Congressman Ro Khanna comes on, because I don't want the congressman to be sad with the fact that we go, I'm going to dance a jig. We're going we gonna to put some twerk music on. We're going to look back at it and celebrate, not his death. But the fact that a man who could celebrate, actively list the names and celebrate individuals who died of HIV and AIDS yeah. back in the 80s, yeah. he is no longer here to spread that type of evil. Now, And he I, played the song, look, mm. before we move on for that, he played Diane Ward's, what was it? Um, I Will Never mm. Love Again or something, whatever the song yeah. from oh, Diane Ward. That was yeah. a segment. That was yeah. a segment. Pure and, evil. And that's disrespectful. And mm. Wow. Yeah. Well, we have one more clip uh, of them and um, we're going to we won't dance until after the congressman is gone, because I want to be respectful to the, create a, a cult, c c cultivate the space um, to be nice and comfortable and not, 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 you know, I don't want the man, I don't want the congressman to be held accountable for the stuff I'm getting ready to say. But this is the clip that I wanted to play where he's talking about um, white guilt and slavery. Take a listen to this. You know, I, folks, I have to tell you something. This this white guilt it's time for all this white guilt to end i know it won't because i know that most people are scared to death and live lives totally immersed in fear because that's what other people want them to live like but i'm sick of it white mm -hmm. guilt is doing nothing for anybody and mm -hmm. white guilt is not solving anything and besides mm -hmm. that a little history lesson for you. If any race of people should not have guilt about slavery, it's Caucasians. What? <laughs> the white race. Wait, wait, bring us up. Bring us up on the screen. Had fewer. Can you can put us? Put us. You got to put us in the response video set for that because <laughs> this man said if anybody has no responsibility or need for guilt right, look, around, bubble. come on, folks, like. I'm sorry. This man made he said Caucasians hundreds they be the ones of, they ain't got the guilt. Lord, hundreds of this? millions of dollars oh, spread God. in this propaganda nonstop. If you want to know why Fox News exists, 
It's because of Rush Limbaugh. If you want to know why why you have so many uh, conservatives around the country who are just right. completely incapable of thinking beyond their bigotry, it's Rush Limbaugh. Because right. for three hours a day, every single day for the last 30 some odd years, Rush Limbaugh has been feeding this level of hatred and bigotry. And to add insult to injury, Donald Trump gave him the highest award a civilian could get. And he awarded him this at the last State of the Union address or the, pre the one prior to that. And so here, people who have been hurt by this man, people who have been uh, defamed by this man, attacked, mocked and laughed to scorn simply because we are fighting for justice. That man got the highest civilian award that the American government can give somebody. And so this to me is like, it's like we we're sitting around and we had to watch as some of the most evil people in the history of evil has mm. the opportunity to be honored as if they were the most noble people. And I'm sorry, you heard it for yourself and that we just don't even have enough time, James and, and Rebecca, to, to cover all his 30 years of, of, of downright maliciousness. Do you so, even know how he, do we even know how he died? I mean, I, I, I just saw that he died. I, and, and honestly, I didn't go into um, uh, try to figure out how he died, but was it a heart cancer? attack or something? Lung, yeah. lung cancer. Oh, lung, lung cancer. cancer. So he yeah. was probably already dealing with that even on his listen in the last few weeks on January oh. 6th, we're talking about like a month ago, uh, oh. over, a little, over a month ago, he already knew what was probably going on with him. And he still mm -hmm. used still. his last days to still be evil for and to be evil. Right. So, um, he went out like a G yeah. uh, an, an evil G what? like he was like, he was like, I'm standing G? by, I'm standing by my bigotry. He, 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 I don't know about was he burned. Uh, you know what? My, my mama said, if I don't have nothing good to say about the dead, don't say nothing at all. So I'm going to shut the hell up. <clears throat> Look, that's the, what, that's I'm saying, what I'm saying, though, is like you got to have some hella confidence to own your dying bed. And the last thing you say isn't, ah, forgive me. It is Brock the Magic Negro. Come on. This is what we're dealing with. That's some that's some commitment. So I salute his commitment to evil. But I also salute the fact that that particular cesspool of slimy greasy vitriolic vitriolic I mean, insecure mm. little dick energy oh fascistic oh evil is no longer I wasn't on the, ready. Face of the planet <laughs> salute remembering rush limbaugh holy lord <laughs> not did little dick something? energy did i say something wrong? i wasn't ready i'll pay the hundred dollar fine <laughs> oh dang! I gonna, missed that one, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna pay the hundred hundred dollar fine. All right. Um, matter of fact, let me go get my my phone and and uh, so this is real early to take Re a break. Should we take a break or can Rebecca's we move on? Go, Rebecca gonna get you. She um, gonna get you. <laughs> I you don't understand. Ready. You don't uh, understand. But, but, but he hates. Rush Limbaugh I mean, has been plaguing m our radio channels for a long time. Oh I remember God, when years. I was younger. Yeah. On, on on local radio and things like that. He literally yeah, was man. on local radio. Um, people made sure that he was nationalized. And and mm -hmm. and, yeah. and I had to, sometimes on the bus in the mornings yeah. as a kid, um, sometimes just like in my father's car or whatever when he's not even paying attention or on the radio station that he would listen to because my dad used to like, I mean, my dad likes rock, soft rock. So sometimes mm. like they'll have his segments on there, yep. Rush Limbaugh segments and things like that. So it's just like, that's how I knew who he was. And my dad would be cursing out the radio, like, you know, because it, it would force you to listen to him before they got to the soft right. rock or whatever. My dad used to listen to him all the time. And I was like, Good. What's the point? Why, Why did they do that? Like, listening? what was that about? They're hate, hate listening. They're they're like it's like hate yeah, watching. Hate you know, you, you, yeah, I, I, th right. I think that's what it was. And, and 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 I used to be like, this man is evil. And then getting mm. older, and this man still being evil. Does he have kids? Like, this is really this is uh, the, the legacy that he left behind is a tough is is, is a, the legacy that he left behind is going to be. I'm about to get in trouble. Can I get in trouble? Okay. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait till uh -oh. after the Congress comes on. Because I, 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 yes, I, I've grieved for some monsters because I do have a I do have this thing for humanity. I right. honestly am saddened when any life is lost. I do. But I can tell you there's a list of monsters that I've grieved for and and and, and I just don't have it in me.
to have a sing single second of sympathy for a man who dedicated his life to the misery and the oppression of marginalized people all across the globe. I am not gloating in the fact that he's gone. I am absolutely celebrating that that evil cannot be spread anymore by him. That's what makes I'm sense to me. It may, I mean, it makes you know, sense to me. The sad part, the bad part is now who's the next MF mm -hmm. that's going to try to take his place. That's it. That's going to try to be even, even worse than him. Somebody's and, already queued up. Like a bigger mm -hmm. asshole. You already know yep. they're waiting in the corner. Yeah, somebody's yep. already queued up. Yep. yep. I want to play one more clip. Um, and this is actually a video of him on the Phil Donahue show back in 1992. This I know him well from 92 to 98. I remember the coverage that uh, because my dad was listening as they covered the impeachment of Bill Clinton and the stuff that this man said on radio should have been illegal back then. So when we go back to 1992, you got to remember this is this man's heyday. He was everywhere everywhere take a look at this clip as he uh talks about feminists but he refers to them as feminazis and he has trading cards so that you can understand who the feminazis are take a look at this here is uh, a feminist femi feminazi trading cards you don't have these we're thinking about it. <laughs> here, here, here it is from uh, the, uh, Russia's listen to this program. radio this is, program this just is a brief great. Uh, audio tape tremendous here. stuff what listen I'll give you two glorious items for one Anita Hill. Trading cards have always been for males only. It's just not fair. It's not right. Damn, I spilled nail polish on my Betty Friedan. Well, EIB is proud to introduce Feminazi Trading Cards for you to save, to collect, to trade. Feminazi cards are designed with a woman in mind. On the front, an action shot of a leading feminist, burning a bra, dominating a TV show, picketing an all-men's club, protesting a British Limbaugh concert, charging into a men's locker room, denouncing Ronald Reagan. I'd do anything for Pat Schroeder. On the back, all the He's vital so statistics, a slime, waist hips, the documented okay, age, so the number please. of abortions, and where applicable, no. the alimony payments and divorce settlement. He's getting joy. Oh, this man, no, look they at him getting joy. And our wholly owned subsidiary, which will market them as Ms. Carriage Incorporated. Uh, you can't stand it when celebrities take on causes. Uh, oh, celebrities marching. Oh, it's let me at him right now. Look, he did. But, uh, <laughs> no, no. It, that is oh, that man. is disgusting that that was played on on air on a show on the big uh, behind Phil Donnie in show a back room in the nineties. Oh. A room full of women. A room full of women. Now, I will say I'm not one for the uh, the feminism movement because it doesn't really include black women, but. In that time, how are you going to go against your own folks, the women, uh, white women? And they sat in that room and listened to that. Nobody got up, packed up, walked out, Nobody shouted down. Nobody swung on him? No Nobody, one. Nobody, like, charged the stage and hit his... Not his, one person. Mm. They just closed their eyes in, in shame and embarrassment that this is mm. actually being played. But they still sat in the room. Mm. So, it, it a lot of... And imagine... A lot of men are still the same way Rush Limbaugh was. Mm. Um, a lot of men in the oh, Republican yeah. Party, a lot of men that represent that far uh, uh, um, right side, those those extremists, they are still mm. like that till this day. They think about women in that 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 way. They think about abortions, a miscarriage. They, they call it miscarriages. They'll um, um, just be oh. so rude and nasty to women um, just because they can. Right. And, and, and listen, right. these these Karens and these Beckys and all of them, they don't like it either, but they will continue to push and support that because mm. if they speak against it, they're speaking against their, their party own. and yeah. things like that. So they'll sit in the room. They'll sit in the room. They will you, sit in the room. Can you see how thing. much joy he got? Uh, I, I don't know if we could scrub the video, but there, the, when when that one particular woman um, after they said miscarriages, LLC hey, or something. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. We can hear you now. Yeah, uh, he, got, um, he got joy. He got pure joy out of, look at him just grinning. He's getting pure joy out of the pain that he's causing people. OK, so there's uh, there's a there's an article, Rebecca, you know, I've been referencing it since I first saw it. And we say it all the time. The cruelty is the point by Adam Sur uh, of The Atlantic. The you cruelty, let I love it because it's, it's the absolute case. It is the fact that Rush Limbaugh enjoyed and reveled in that cruelty. And Rebecca, you said something else. You said there's a lot of people who have this this exact attitude that he has. That's because they got it from him. He is the father of the modern conservative movement. 
He was the father of the Tea Party movement. He was the father of those fascists who marched up the steps. He has been training them and indoctrinating them for 30 years. And so all they know is the pure evil and the contempt for marginalized communities that this man gave them every single day for three hours. And yeah, it is a good thing for humanity that he is no longer able to broadcast uh, whatever the cause of the end of his broadcast may have been. Let's go to a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about a whole lot of more stories and we're going to be joined also by uh, Congressman Ro Khanna, along with uh, Professor Jared Ball. Um, all that and more coming up on Like It or Not. James, it's in your hand. <laughs> Wave. My inner soul make a village glow. You can see the rail through my inner scope. Real grows with a field coat. Get my good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, people. And welcome again to Like It or Not, y'all. We hope y'all enjoying the show so far. Make sure that you stay tuned. We got the good congressman coming up soon, shortly here. Make sure you stay tuned. Make sure that you hit that like button as well, y'all, so you always know when Like It or Not is going down, y'all. Hit that like, hit that like. Shout out to everybody that is in the chat room. I see y'all, and we appreciate y'all being here so much, y'all. Good morning. Morning. That's for the stove light. Tasting green, all I know is to go. They see my pro when it shows right. Dirty figure to my old life. I can't lose. Count up the blue. Count the spin at the nibble. Put it on for the crew. It's a cool room. Don't got no roof. So I can shoot for the star. Be yeah. Shout out, let's see I got you Lavelle, shout out to you Ruth, good morning, Purple Rain Hearts Tammy Faye, Goku Good morning, y'all Good morning, Mara And good morning, mama I know you in that somewhere lurking My mama lurking in the chat somewhere, y'all Shout out to my mama I just cut myself a little Right, don't <laughs> to remind me where I'm from and where I'm going and where I'm at. Only trust it out my tulips. I talk that truth. And, and shout out to everybody that is in the lion's den. Shout out to y'all. We love y'all, man. Thank you so much for being in this morning. My mind is blowing, set the blow up from how I mold it. Never forfeit much clutch. How the way I close it. Taking more than I can fold. Miss Nuru, I appreciate the luck. Thank you so much. Shout out to the black mamas. That's right. Still in stilettos. What's going on, sister? Yeah. I come from where the floor is top down and bows. I used to live off of Walking on my grave. It's actually tea this morning. It was coffee yesterday because I ran out of honey. I had like a little bit of honey left, but I went on and did my tea. I needed tea this morning instead. Oh, good. Right now, for the soul, right? For the third finger to my old life. I can't lose. Count up the blue. Spin at the neighborhood. Put on for the crew. It's a cool room. Don't got no roof. So I can shoot. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I can shoot for the star. So I can shoot. All right, y'all. Here's a slow and soulful, soothing groove for y'all that I picked up. Y'all. I hope y'all like it. Broken. Seven sweetheart, Brenda Johnson. Good morning, Rebecca Azor. Good morning. All the plans you made in your heart grew just to die, and now your damaged goods, damaged should never been. Thought you were bulletproof. Look at you. What happened? Did she hurt you? Are you okay, baby? <coughs> Everyone gets hurt. LaShawna, good morning. Sugar Booger, I appreciate the love. Life. Rebecca, I got you. I'm going to send it to you. Tempers of nature. You gotta have it sometimes, right? I'm just Baby, playing. Don't cry, no but the name of the song is called Mama's Here by King Sis featuring Joby. Chuck Diesel, good morning, sir. Mama's here. 
Robert O'Quinn. Good morning, sir. We appreciate that love. All right, y'all, welcome back to the screen. The one and only Benjamin Dixon. Welcome back to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth and not care who doesn't like it. I am excited to be joined by Congressman Ro Khanna, who has served as a U.S. representative to Congress from California's 17th Congressional District since 2017. One of the most vocal members of Congress when it comes to a particular situation that I have been following intensely, the Saudi war with Yemen. Uh, Congressman uh, Khanna, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Benjamin, thank you. And thank you for having me on to talk about the humanitarian catastrophe in Yemen. Yeah, and, and, and I'm, I'm so glad that you started and you phrased it exact, exactly like that. The reason I talk about it and I w wanted you to come on is because there's not enough people talking about what's happening in Yemen and America's direct responsibility for what's going on. Um, give us your thoughts in general about the complicitness of America with what's happening in Yemen and as it pertains to how we should fix what's happening there. Benjamin, it is a horrific situation. 16 million, 16 million Yemenis face the possibility of starvation or a famine. Uh, this could be the worst famine if it's not prevented in, the, uh, in modern history. Uh, my passion for it came because my grandfather was a, a part of Gandhi's independence movement in jail for India's independence. And in 1943, there was a famine in West Bengal, which was the previous worst famine. And I said, how can we possibly have that happen in the 21st century? Unfortunately, America was complicit for since 2015. We have been refueling the Saudi planes that have been bombing the Yemenis people. We have been providing intelligence to the Saudis that have been bombing the Yemenis people. Uh, and we finally, President Biden said, we're going to stop the offensive support. Uh, but the reality is that the bombing continues. Uh, we need mm -hmm. to do far more. Uh, the situation on the ground has not improved. You said specifically to that, you, you did recognize Joe Biden's attempt and his move in a positive direction, but you said he needs to go further. You said we need further clarification on what specific military support will be ending. And just as importantly, what support Biden will pl uh, still plans to provide for the Saudis. Uh, could you unpack that? Because I think that is very significant. Well, Benjamin, what the administration has said, and I give them credit, is that we're not going to participate in any offensive strikes that uh, Saudis may take. But what the Riyadh says all the time is, well, they're just taking defensive action. They're being attacked from Yemen. And so they're going and striking villages or striking pe people in Yemen uh, to take defensive preventive action. Uh, I don't think the U.S. should be part of that. This is not something that we ought to be uh, involved in. Uh, and we ought to uh, further demand that the Saudis and UAE and, frankly, Iran all end uh, any funding into Yemen or foreign interference. The war is not going to end if you have these powers continuing to pour in money into the region. Uh, we need to make sure that this is an internal civil war first and have resolution. One of the main reasons I focus on this uh, is twofold. The international relations, the foreign policy aspect, and this is what you're speaking to. But could you also speak to why an average American who, and this is no insult to us because a lot of us can pick out Yemen on the map. Why should the average American who really probably maybe didn't even know this was happening, why should we care about the crisis that we as American citizens have some responsibility for if no other reason but through our taxes? Because we're a nation founded on a belief that human dignity doesn't end at our borders. Every individual has dignity. And this is uh, a horrific, horrific humanitarian crisis, uh, arguably the worst in the last 50 years. I mean, you literally have, if you read about it, uh, young kids starving, women and children being bombed. And we have the chance to act to prevent millions of deaths. That's really what's at stake. If the situation continues, the UN has said millions of people, millions of children uh, could die. And it's not that uh, this was happening without our involvement. We actually facilitated this war. We provided the Saudis with the equipment, with the logistics, with the intelligence uh, to bomb Yemen. So we have a responsibility to end it and to help rebuild Yemen uh, if you care at all about basic human rights. Mm. 
basic human rights and, and, and basic human life. Uh, the geopolitics of this is actually uh, something that we don't have enough time to delve into today, but could you briefly speak to the, the complexity of our relationship with Saudi Arabia and why we continue to support them in this fashion when we see very clearly what they are doing? And I mean, we can really go all the way back gener uh, decades and talk about uh, some of these issues, but this one specifically, why is the United States of America allowing ourselves to remain in bed with the regime that is waging a war that is causing this level of humanitarian crisis? Well, Benjamin, you asked the central question. We should not have this kind of relationship with the Saudis. We don't need it. We did at one point need Saudi Arabia for oil. But frankly, as we become more energy independent, uh, that dependence is no longer there. Uh, second, we don't need to have as many bases and troops there. I mean, one of the things I find so frustrating is the constant view that, OK, our troops are being uh, attacked, so let's send more troops into an endless battle in the Middle East. No, let's start pulling those troops out. These are not our wars. And third, we need uh, to not view the Saudis as sort of a balance of power check on Iran. Instead, right. America uh, should try to extricate ourselves from a region that's only 3.5 percent of entire global GDP. It's costing us lives. It's costing us our morality. It's costing us trillions mm. of dollars. Mm. It's costing us our morality. I, I thank you for phrasing it that way. I want to shift very quickly while we have a few more moments with you to um, the inability of Republicans to um, convict even to get 10 Republicans to join us. And, and this is what you said with regard to it. You said the fact that we could not get even 60 senators to vote for the most obvious pro proposition uh, convicting Trump is a clarion call for elimin eliminating the filibuster. Could you speak to that very quickly? Sure. Well, the filibuster, as you know, is a relic of the Jim Crow era. This was not thought up by Madison or Jefferson. It was thought up by Calhoun to defend mm. the interests of safe slave states. It was uh, there then used to oppose the civil rights legislation. Uh, in fact, it used to be two thirds requirement on the filibuster. And finally, in 1975, it was lowered to 60 votes. And that was a battle against basically slave states that did not want progress. And what you saw is the remnants of that, that we could not even get uh, 60 votes to convict and impeach a president who had basically ordered or incited an attack on his own people, where there mm. were open displays of white supremacy and uh, Confederate symbols. How could you not get 60 votes on that? So my question is, if you can't get 60 votes for that, how are you possibly going to get 60 votes for $15 minimum wage or all of the reasonable legislation that we want to promote? Let's get rid of something that is a relic of the Jim Crow era and that has no basis in our constitutional uh, history. Mm. Congressman, you are a progressive. You fight for progressive issues. What could you say uh, to people who have a fear, progressives in particular, uh, this fear that once a congressperson is elected and they go to represent our progressive values, there's a latent fear in the back of our minds that that somehow you all will be co-opted by the system because there is a massive system up there. Could you speak to that? Well, Budget, I'm going to be honest. It's a legitimate fear. When you go into Congress, you have so many competing balance uh, issues. You got to think, is someone going to support my legislation? Do I get on the wrong side of the White House? Do I get on the wrong side of the leadership? So what I say is keep us honest. Keep pushing mm. us. Don't make any elected official your uh, the savior. Uh, the mm. saviors in American politics comes from outside the system. People like Dr. King, Frederick Douglass, be the movement that forces members of Congress uh, to make the change that we need. Congressman Ro Khanna, 17th District of California, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Benjamin, for giving me the chance. Anytime, it was our pleasure. James, take us to a quick break. When we come back, we have a list of stories to go through, and we're also gonna be joined by Professor Jared Ball as we go throughout this episode. Um, thanks again to Congressman uh, Khanna for joining us for that very important conversation about Yemen. We'll be back after this. Thank you so much to Congressman Ro Connor. We greatly appreciate you being here this morning. Greatly appreciate it. 
Make sure that you hit that like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button, y'all. So you always know when like or not is going down, y'all. Shout out to everybody that that's in the chat that participated. We greatly appreciate you. Started from the mud, now you see us going up. Numbers never lie, now you see us blowing up. People use the front, now you see them showing up. Show us up. I've been down and now below. Keep it a book, I don't. Always been one up on all of these boys. They be trying to front for all of these boys. I ain't got time cause they all in their feelings. I still the gang and we making a killing. It's 2020 and they notice the vision. You be the hero, I'm playing the villain. The underdogs and we walk in the villain. We getting money, yeah, they think that we killing. They talking hot, yeah, if they abundance and we won't stop till we all touch a million. Don't ever forget, but we probably forgive them. I'm living. Taking the cause I was given, my blessings is already written. Wrapped it a ribbon, putting ourselves in positions to making some major decisions. I Started no, that that's it's coming up though. See us going up. Numbers never lie. Now you see us blowing up. People used to front. Now you see them showing up. Show us up. I've been down and now below. Love, love. I'm trying to get where I'm going, but haters be trolling. Okay, yeah, don't do it, uh, Nick. Thinking you got me right where you want me. I tell a ghost just duck up. Sending them shots. We send them back. Young yeah, ain't really about that. Run, it's always bounce back. Need more hands just to count that. Stay on my bully. I need me more breeze just so we can get the team right. Loaded up fully. Dogs on the leash. And you be Shout out to everybody that's in the, 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 the chat room, room y'all. Work smarter with some sacrifice. Sugar spice and everything nice. Mix it up, now you got a spice. Be bridging the gap. They want us to rap, so fuck we back. Yeah. So can be here, appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Been on my back. Been on my drag. I'm feeling jet lag. Yeah. Came back for Vicky and I ain't in pack. Cause I'm going back. Facts. Ooh, double the racks. TD the bank. You see these bank. The Cuban is slink. Smoking that drink. Pull up the drink. Fill up the tank. Do you think? I ain't the one, but I'm the one. Who does I feel? He going dumb. You hear them drums, came from the slums, they know we the ones, yeah Started from the mud, now you see us going up Numbers never lie, now you see us blowing up People used to front, now you see them showing up So what's up? I be Shout out to the Lions Den I don't fuck with you Hey, Dwayne, if you could bring up the Lions Den for me. Lions Den and, and everybody that's in the chat room that's watching the streaming right now. One of the Lion Den members sent us a song yesterday that I heard on his Instagram. I'm like, yo, I got to play this on the show, y'all. So shout out to Nick Eden who sent his song in. And oh, my gosh, y'all. I'm, I'm just going to play it. And we'll go from there, y'all. Okay, here we go. Here's Nick Eden with Let's Chill. Right, you see him? <laughs> I'm just a man, I make mistakes, you know that I ain't perfect. I know the days have come when you don't know that it's all worth it. Just know I'm trying to make it, trying to take it up a level. Cause you're my favorite girl, my pride, my world, and may I have this dance. Just give me a chance. Cause I'm a better man And I know that though I messed up I just need for you to see This opportunity To see where we could be Baby, please Let's chill Start a family Have a whole lot of screaming kids Let's chill Baby, you and me Ain't nothing that we can't win Jay, highlight Nick Put Nick on the screen He, he deserved that big screen spot Jay, put him up there for me, please Just you and me Cause you're my favorite girl My mama talking about Let me go find my honey Let me get up in your Mama sit your tail down some more, Thank you show you places Things and faces It's essential For us to be the best To take the test That lovers have to Just let me prove my love If y'all are feeling this Drop the lions in the chat Drop the lions in the chat Lions, fires, crowns, thumbs up Everything I need y'all to drop that in the chat right now And I know that though I messed up, I just need for you to see this opportunity <laughs> to see how we could be. Baby, please start a family, have a whole lot of screaming kids. Yeah. 
Dwayne, there's no way we can link the uh, VIP to talk, is it? I want Nick to tell everybody when this track was produced or what year this is from. Nick, Nick, I hate to put you on the spot like that, but you know. (laughs) Start a family, have a whole lot of screaming kids. Just you and me. Okay, Ain't perfect. Okay. That we can't win. Please believe in me. Okay, perfect. Maybe okay. we can take over the world. Yeah. Chill. Just right. you and me. Cause you're my favorite girl. Oh. Let's settle down. Yes, it this just this this receives the three That's X's of I approval. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and bring it in. Uh huh. Oh my gosh. Dwayne, are you there? Can you bring him in? Can you hear us? Nick. I, I didn't think you were going to do this. <laughs> Okay, go ahead, Nick. I, I didn't. I didn't really think you were gonna do that. <laughs> but I oh that. man! <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me now? Okay, Nick, can you hear us? Okay, yeah, I, I appreciate that. I, I really didn't think y'all were gonna do that. I appreciate it so much. Oh um, man, I, I, we still can't hear him. <laughs> uh, you hear me? Oh, y'all can. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. No, so I actually wrote that song back in 2012. I wrote it about my wife, and now I'm getting emotional about it. Um, but yeah, I recorded in 2013. Uh, I was lucky that it was actually number one on the UK Soul Chart in 2014. So uh, I have, but I, yeah, but I have not actively done music since 2014. So uh, when 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 James wow. was on Instagram today, he asked me about the song. I was like, yeah, but I haven't done it in forever. You know, I, I just look. I, you know, I just I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Like, I'm a long time listener of all the way back to content news. So I just appreciate you guys so much. Hey, man, we appreciate, man, we appreciate you, man. You got me over here sweating, dude. That was that's a jam. <laughs> it's literally a jam, dude. Right. <laughs> Rebecca, you have, have a whole excursion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 bring us back. Bring us back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Nick, man. We greatly appreciate you, dude. Keep up the work, man. And my gosh, bro. That was amazing. People like you making music, dude. So yeah, if that you was ever amazing. get back Shout into out. it, man, the world needs you. that that type of music, dude. We will definitely we'll support behind you. you. Greatly appreciate yeah. it. Ooh, man. I appreciate it. Ah. Uh. That was good. I, I had I to really do it, y'all. I know it's out of norm, but that's like that. when I heard it, I'm like, I I just gotta bring this on the show uh, tomorrow. I love I got that. To. I love jo- that so much. Joining us on the screen now is my brother from another mother, Professor Jared Ball, uh, professor of communication studies at Morgan State, the Morgan State University, uh, author of the recent book, The Myth and Propaganda of Black Buying Power. Brother, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. And uh, and a shout out very quickly to my uh, African and African-American diaspora studies 100 class all of whom should be tuned in <laughs> yeah uh, uh yeah and we'll find out about that shortly after but anyway yeah, thanks for yeah. Uh-huh. y'all better y'all better matter of <laughs> fact go and subscribe to our channels that that's all how we're gonna them. know that y'all are actually out there yeah really doing this. <laughs> each and Listen, every one of you guys from the class subscribe threat. right now click like do all of that <laughs> all that all that listen professor i'm gonna be let, let me you you know this and i'm just gonna keep it 100 with the audience like i literally did not have a list of things that i wanted to talk to you about because i know as soon as i bring you on it's going to be nothing but pure brilliance uh but we can start with with your book um we've talked about it on the show before and i think it's still a critical kind of thesis that you're trying to make sure everyone can understand uh about the myth of black buying power just kind of give us a quick quick synopsis of that Well, the short of it is that the claim that we hear all the time, and we just heard it repeated more recently uh, over uh, this this month of Black History Month, and it's been uh, even more recently reported in association with Latin America, uh, that we have this 1.5 
four or five trillion dollars in uh, buying power and that if we were more, quote unquote, financially responsible or financially literate, rather, uh, and and more responsible, responsible, and more mature with our spending and our consumption, mm. that we could somehow close these persistent income and wealth gaps. Um, mm. And what I've just tried to show in the book is that this this myth has a specific origin targeted specifically at black America to encourage us away from the uh, only power that I would argue we have and that I think those in power know we have, which is social movement, political organization, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and collective power in, in a non-economic sense that, that, uh, that try to move us away from that and push us towards black capitalism and entrepreneurialism uh, as, a, as a tactic of limiting our power. Uh, so through this, I just try to show how this myth is promoted and regurgitated and uh, unfortunately supported by both black and white commercial right. presses in its promotion, because ultimately what it's there to do is to steer uh, ad revenue to black uh, and white uh, uh, corporate or commercial presses. Uh, so mm. with, with more than about 500 billion in ad revenue being spent every year, uh, obviously commercial presses want to capture that and to 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 attract that revenue, they want to be able to say that their audiences, and in this case, black audiences, have this kind of power, quote unquote, to spend on the products being advertised. The problem is that gets turned into, quote unquote, economic analysis and misrepresented as a, as a, a, a financial strength mm. that does not exist. Mm. I just, I, I love okay. it. Yeah. I, I love every bit of it. Cause and let's work our way backwards right through that. Right. So because of the incentives of that half a billion dollars are, are did you say half a billion or five? Half a trillion. It's, it's about half 500 tr- billion 500 every year. Billion dollars yeah. On advertising. So there is this concerted effort to create a narrative that will push those dollars into corporate media. And the thing that stood out the most about what you said is that our true power that narrative particularly eats away at our true power of organizing and social movements. Let's, let's dig in there, right? Expand on that, expound on that. Where, how do we then leverage our true power in light of a massive propaganda campaign that seeks to almost neutralize our true power? Because those two things are, are kind of at odds with each other, right? right? The organizing power of the black community and the greed that is at the core of everything that's on the other side of the aisle. How do we come to terms with that? Well, honestly, I mean, it's I, I hate my answer. It's 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 insufficient and vague. But the reality is we can only do this through political organization. Everybody has mm. to join organizations. I'm very much with Kwame Ture on this. Uh, mm. Everybody should be a member of an organization. It doesn't matter which one it is. If, if mm. it claims to be trying to help black people improve themselves, you should be a member of it. And then from that point, uh, politically educate, organize and try to push those organizations more to the left. Uh, Mm -hmm. And then we can have disagreements and debates about what we do in those organizations and in those spaces. And most of that, you know, has to happen offline and off the record. Uh, Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. but that's the only way that's the only way you can go. But when we are constantly barraged with messaging that says you can do this by setting up a business or Mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, uh, saving your money. Uh, uh, while there may be benefits to that on some level, these are not solutions. Wealth is not created through small business uh, development and, and circulating mm. the dollar, as is often uh, uh, said in our communities mythologically as well. Uh, wealth is created and something I don't talk about in the book, uh, honestly, but wealth is first and foremost created through military conquest, genocide, Ooh. Uh, Ooh. enslavement. Uh, you know, Ooh. white wealth wasn't created through starting small businesses and circulating their dollars. It talk started about it. Through conquest and, and, you know, and, and free labor. So when they turn around and tell us, well, you should just start a business and pull yourself up by your bootstraps into my, you know, mm. the young, young brother, Devin Springer, who, who I mean, I got to credit him with this, who said the, 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 the metaphor doesn't even work. You literally cannot pull yourself up by bootstraps. So, mm. so the idea that this could be turned into economic and political uh, uh, terminology is, is equally uh, fanciful. So, so this is, this is uh, anyway, so this is, you know, we, we have to, again, just build organizations, join those and try to push them to the left uh, and ultimately uh, assume political power and develop public policy to redistribute the wealth uh, that we all participate in creating. Uh, and that's why uh, those who have wealth understand that and they've captured the public policy apparatus. And I know uh, you and I don't fully agree on this, but that's an, a lot of where your show is focused and your work is focused on trying to capture that political power uh, mm-hmm. uh, and using that for the good of your community. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, again, we, you and I may have disagreements on, on, on the path uh, as it relates to that, 
but but that's the kind of disagreement and discussion that we're supposed to be having uh, once yeah. we get past mm-hmm. the idea that the starting of a small business will do it. Uh, and very quickly, I've been uh, a part of a paper and hopefully, you know, I'll share it with you when it comes out later uh, in about a week, hopefully. Uh, and maybe I can come back or one of our, uh, yeah. you know, my colleagues can come back and talk about it because it's an assessment on the condition of, of black business pre and post covid. Uh, and one of the stats that I've, I've just keep uh, uh, highlighting in, 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 in the pre uh, run up to this paper coming out is that from 1992 to 2012, black people created over two million businesses and yet mm. only captured the the wow. the uh, the increase of the, the captured increase of the national revenue only went from one to one point three percent. So this wow. is not an issue of black people not knowing how to start businesses or being entrepreneurial in, in spirit. It's it's about being locked out of the apparatuses that actually produce wealth. And that's what mm. uh, uh, my book is in so, some small way trying to to uh, I, address you know, mythological in terms man, of the mytholo- I, mythology. I, I, I like the way you slid that criticism, that critique of me in there really really nicely nestled in between some amazing no it's just to be honest like (laughs) but that's the point like we're not on we're not on the same page with that and that's but that's but but, but my point is love and that's that's, yeah it is and that's how it's supposed Mm -hmm. to be and and my point is but once we agree that 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 is the discussion the the pathway to assuming political power and we're not arguing over well why haven't you started your own business or why haven't you invested better or why are you shopping poorly you know we're learning we learned all last year and are still learning that it is, you know, the, the, the economy in this country is at least 70 or 67 percent consumption based. When right. you don't consume, when people don't consume, the economy collapses. So instead of telling poor people to stop spending frivolously on hair or too much Come on a on. coffee or rims, we should be saying thank you for that consumption and rewarding yes. that consumption with a greater degree of the wealth that that creates going back to the people through yeah, whatever man. variety of mechanisms you want to come up with. Because when you don't buy that eight dollar latte, the people who work at that coffee place lose Talk. their jobs. Talk. Man. So so He's so speaking, it, a conservative. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you're speaking. Um, it's like school is in session. I feel like yes. I'm back at Florida A&M right. in the classroom. No, no. Cause and that's what I was. No. Yeah. But, we're back. No. Wait, wait, hang on. I go, Cause I was going to say like, like, cause I love, like we, we actually agree on probably like 99% of these things. Uh, the only thing I don't agree with is the fact that he's at Morgan state. Uh, it's like, uh, <laughs> and the fact that, but then cook. Right. It's all right. But every that, time right. we ever, now, every time we now, ever ran into now, them. We'll take this education. <laughs> But now we're taking Glasses in session, it's, it's, it's very interesting. It it's is. very interesting that you make those points because a lot of people who are on these social media platforms are uh, in in the apps like Clubhouse, and they're saying exactly mm-hmm. what you're saying, and they're saying mm-hmm. things like, yeah. uh, you know, you shouldn't be spending your money on on the cars or the hair, like you, like you said, and they don't understand that it's it, it's so much more to that. You know, mm. there's a process like you just laid out, and if this conversation or the book, um, whoever's watching should definitely get it before you make your clubhouse appearances and start (laughs) judging or pressuring black folks to use their last dollar to do whatever. To use a stimulus check. Start a business with your stimulus check. To start a business or or start um, judging them because they didn't use their stimulus check to start a business or, Mm -hmm. you know, you're you're judging them for that. But, you know, get this man's book because this is definitely key things that we should all understand and know because it's backed up by uh, stats and everything. So thank you so so much for that. I, I honestly feel like I am in class yeah. right now. Yeah. No. Right. Well. Yeah. Well, go ahead, doctor. No, I was just going to say, I appreciate that. And, and <laughs> folks, uh, I'll happily let them know that because people uh, rose up in the streets last summer, the publisher yeah. rewarded that, uh, as is the case, I think, as an example of, of, of uh, how to assume power. People yeah. rose up uh, uh, and, and, you know, it just needs to be organized and taken the next steps. But because people rose up, uh, the publisher has uh, is rewarded that uh, uh, by offering the book in its digital form for free. So you can just go oh, wow. uh, oh, to my shit. website, I mix what I like dot org, and click that top <laughs> right you know, and get that free. And, you know, so there's really no reason not to get it. It's 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 a relatively short read. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it does have stats and information and leads you to many other sources to, to follow up, but it should, you know, uh, uh, um, but it's easily digestible. Uh, yeah. And I hope makes a, 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 or is going to make or continues to make an important intervention because the propaganda keeps coming. And lastly, I just, I just want to say very quickly, because again, with the Black History Month push that this myth got, uh, very prominent people in very prominent spaces, uh, for instance, have been misrepresenting a lot of the history, particularly as it relates to Dr. King uh, and his radicalism yes. is often diminished. Um, mm. But there have been a, a, a lot of uh, misrepresentations of him, particularly in terms of, of economic strength and even arguing, uh, as was the case not too long ago down there in Atlanta, that that he was actually um, 
never had to use the phrase buy black because black businesses were already always there supporting him. But if you actually go and read his book, where do we go from here? Chaos or community. And I believe it's on mm. page 51, at least in the Kindle version. He says specifically that quote buy black and quote cannot work because it is insufficient because black people don't have any money. And because ultimately, as I'm saying in a less, uh, uh, you know, uh, eloquent mm. way than he did, uh, uh, it is the state's involvement in, in redistribution and policy that determines wealth. And that's where we need to be addressing ourselves to. So he has literally said buying black won't work as a campaign uh, mm. and is used to this day, even this month, this year, as a proponent of the mythology. So that's one of the reasons why it's so complicated and difficult to, to assess. Day. But once you just really look at it, 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 it is really made plain very easily. Mm. Doc, you, you first, first and foremost, I, I always love having you on um, because I just I really enjoy sitting in the in the presence of, of black brilliance. Um, and and I'm, I've read the book uh, and thank you for for getting it to me. And we and I, and I read it and I, I, I want to just say that not only is it it is a, an accessible read, it it does connect some synapses. Right. It, it does. A little, if you really read what uh, Dr. Ball is saying in this, it really does clarify and give you insight into a whole lot of things. Um, and so I definitely recommend it. Um, I want to double back on something that you said that is so critical. The real source of wealth is not pulling yourself up by bootstraps. It's mm -hmm. not starting a business. The real source of wealth on the face of this planet is in conquest. And we have been living in that conquest and we have a recipients, the, the people who are on the receiving end of that conquest in the global South, they, they experience that conquest on a daily basis through the military industrial complex. Um, I, I, I'm actually, I, we, we agree so much on so many things. I'm actually really curious as to where we might even disagree because the pathway forward to, to conquering these problems um, is, is, is a, is a mixed, um, tell me, let, let's talk about that. Like where is the pathway forward for not only black people, but marginalized people across the globe, particularly in the global South. We just spoke with Congressman Ro Khanna about what's going on in Yemen. That is a direct extension of that conquest that you're speaking of. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately though, and this is, this is the only part where I will, one of the, the parts at least where we would, I think, disagree is that it's that the Democratic Party has also played a role in supporting and extending oh. that, that warfare. And I don't think yeah, this next absolutely. administration is going to make enough of an adjustment on that. So that's the only thing that that. So uh, the only honestly, the only where area I'm clear or I think I'm clear that we disagree is that I think we need to be left to the Democratic Party. And I think we need to be organizing oh. separately. Uh, blocks and campaigns and Come on. movements. And that's basically it. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so that's really all I mean by that, that, uh, that, and, and that's where I think all the, the, the answers lie or lay. Absolutely. I can't honestly remember which one that is. Uh, but, but when, <laughs> when, when, um, uh, but when people organize outside of uh, nonprofit influences and uh, you know, dominant political party influences, I think that's where all the answers will, mm. will, will evolve. Uh, and that's the kind of, you know, what I meant in a, a, a few minutes ago when I was saying, referencing the, the uprising last summer, all it really requires easier said than done, obviously, is uh, some enhanced organization and preparation, mm. given that, as mm. Kwame Ture, as I mentioned earlier, also always warned us, police violence is the not only the font of, of almost every black uprising, if not all of them in this country's history, uh, 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 police or slave catcher, you know, same process, right. yeah. or, yeah. or uh, uh, and, and that we know it's going to happen again. So in, if we organize in preparation for that, rather than a response that is impactful and meaningful, uh, mm. albeit disorganized, we would have something that, that would lead to something else. I don't know that or how to get there. I would just like to see as, as I, you know, yeah. when, when you had me on before the election and I talked about, uh, you know, I'm a Malcolm X voter in that I'm saying that oh, we should organize okay. electorally the way Malcolm said, which is that one, that is just one element of the struggle, uh, electoral okay. politics. Yeah. And then we should be organizing as independent blocks with independent campaigns and, and platforms uh, that we can uh, maybe make, uh, uh, you know, uh, that, that with candidates and policies and platforms that are beholden actually to the community as opposed to Absolutely. funders and military industrial complex uh, influences, et cetera, which is, again, why I think the Democratic Party hasn't done enough uh, in, oh. in ending these these per permanent wars. 
Oh man, man, listen, I absolutely love your work, man, because because nah, bro, we on the same page. We on the same page. Okay. I was just in the in the in the in the election. I was just choosing which enemy I wanted to fight against. Do I want to fight against neoliberals who enhance and sustain this military industrial complex, or do I want to fight against a fascist who enhances and maintains this in in uh, military industrial complex? So that was my choice during the election. But here, as we stand right now, word for word for word, <laughs> I'm on. I'm on. The only thing I'm not on the same page with you on is. Morgan State. But shout out to everyone from Morgan State who's but watching Florida right A&M now. Florida University we love you guys. is the best university in the in nation. Oh. However, we will we will give credit to all <laughs> the professors not. doing the work just yeah. as Professor Jared Ball is doing. But yeah. we know, yes. we know yeah. we're not going to do that on today's show. We're not going to do that. It's, it's love. It's, it's HBCU it is love. love. It is so and much we love. love over to Morgan love. State. <laughs> Cause we all we all we got HBCU all on the screen, right? So shout out to right. to fam yep. to fam you. Let me you know. just let me just. But don't put men in the top left and then the bottom Every right. Cats. Hell uh, Wildcats, James doom, doom, and doom. and Morgan Let's State. Go. We shout out to all them. Hell the Rattlers, and that's all right because it's HBCU love right up in here getting HBCU knowledge. I do feel like, like I'm in Absolutely. the classroom. Yes. I hope all the students who are watching from Professor Jared Ball's classroom yes. are definitely listening. Taking points, subscribing, liking, and sharing. Oh, yeah, look, you're yeah. about to find out. <laughs> We're gonna find out. There's a pop quiz. There's a pop quiz coming. Pop quiz. But let's let, let but 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 let, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I just wanted to make sure I got in here that that I congratulated the the, the revamp of the the morning show. Uh, oh, thanks, man. I appreciate your work, uh, and I and I appreciate people producing media that allows us to go from from the 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 a little farther from the Ooh. matrix, so to speak. Yeah. So, so that's so a good again, segue. We, we, we wherever we agree or disagree, I just appreciate that th- that it exists and that you're doing what you're doing and that we have. Man, no, nobody disagree with you, here. brother. <laughs> I'm just saying. But it's good to disagree, though. Saying. No, he's, he's it's really good to disagree in these in, in these is. environments it because is. I need people to understand. Like, yeah, we're not monolithic. We do mm. we do disagree in places, but we're fighting the same fight. We're going right. we're, the right. the ending the end goal is for all of us mm. to be free, and we mm. ain't trying to sit hey, here and be. Thank you. you Thank you, stuck on a point of being, you know, disagreeing somewhere. No, we no, 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 here. But no, 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 no. Because here's the thing. Thank you, Rebecca. But here's you're the welcome. Thing. <laughs> here's the thing. Um, you had a great way for us to dovetail the entire conversation, because literally what we're doing here is we're fighting for five things on this network for every person on the face of the planet to have housing, to have food, to have education, to have health care and to have peace. Security. Those are the five things that we're fighting for. The best way that I know how is through media right now. Right. Um, And the best way that I know how. And I'm thinking of specifically the Fred Hampton movie that we've referenced every single day. We're going to keep referencing (laughs) it. The fear of that movie originally was that it was going to be a whitewash of his legacy. And I don't know if you've had a chance to see the movie, but it was it was as true as a film could be uh, based on historical events to, in my opinion, like I, I think it really spoke to the revolution. And in speaking to that revolutionary spirit that is in the bones and the blood of every single one of us, uh, just, just to what degree has it been awakened? Um, I feel like that method, I feel like what they did with that movie is a, a useful strategy in moving the ball forward in the national discourse in terms of the revolution. In other words, the revolution may not be televised, but it will be digitized. It will be streamed and it will come to a theater near you because the people who are behind some of these projects, they're not playing around. They're not playing around with with America. They're not playing around with the military industrial complex. Some of these people, not all of them, but some of these creatives have a real keen sense of what's going on in the revolution. I don't know if you saw the movie, but what are your thoughts about that? I did see the movie. And now, so finally we got to a point where we can disagree. So, okay. so the, the, <laughs> so first of all, shout out to, uh, uh, Fred Hampton Jr. And Mama Akua and Jerry, uh, shout out to Morgan States, Dr. Ray Wimbush and my sister Rosa Clemente, who were, uh, mm-hmm. associate producers on the film. I have seen the film. Uh, I've been in dialogue with, 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 with Rosa and Fred Jr. On a number of occasions and more to come. Uh, but I don't think but but to your point, I think the movie actually is more of an industry response and attempt to blunt the revolutionary fervor in the community and in the streets. And I say that to say very quickly, uh, uh, if you just look at the way the film is framed, 
Uh, it's told from the perspective of the snitch of, from the FBI. We don't see it's not a biopic about Fred Hampton Jr. I mean, mm -hmm. Fred Hampton, mm -hmm. rather. We don't see Fred Hampton's upbringing. We don't see anything about his parents. We don't see anything about his politicization. We don't see anything about him organizing in the NAACP at age 14 and already showing up in intelligence agency uh, uh, dossiers. We don't see anything. We hear reference to the COINTELPRO or counterintelligence program, but we don't really see all that it was meant to do. And it's almost caricatured and reduced to being the mm. the the emanations of just one lunatic and J. Edgar Hoover, who, as bad as he was, was really just in a, a one piece of an entire institutional uh, state apparatus that supported mm. him and still supports that that approach to these kinds of politics. So we don't really mm. get to see much about the, the, the we hear references to it, but we don't really get to understand the politics of the Panthers and, and socialism and armed struggle and guerrilla warfare. And even just as my critique was of the, Nat, Nate, the Nate Parker, Nat Turner film, in a film where, where we're supposed to be able to see beautiful expressions of revolutionary violence, uh, we are we are uh, 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 we, we are held back. We are teased almost because all of the violence we see is suffered by black by black, black people. Uh, and when the one moment where uh, white white uh, police officers or anyone else might suffer some violence, the film cuts to black. And I think in many ways that's a metaphor for for uh, uh, the film's intent, which is really supposed to, I think, encourage mm. uh, uh, a symbolic reference to revolutionary activity. But again, mm. told through the perspective of the state and told through the perspective of the state snitch and really meant to humanize him and make it almost seem as though he is legitimate in his decision making, even if we don't agree with it. And that ultimately all that we get of Fred is some brief moments of, of romance and love and some statements and even mm -hmm. some well acted uh, uh, performance. Uh, and then he's he is he is um, just dispatched even in and mm. one point out and I'll, I'll stop here but one point there's a, there's a scene where we see him delivering this brilliant speech and then the, the camera pans back to show you what the film is really doing that is uh giving you the perspective of the one viewing the speech which is william o'neill uh and then even that isn't done well because william o'neill was not some uh you know uh he, he had a lot more agency pun intended in, in his life and in his relationship <laughs> with the good. fbi than is shown in the film uh, yeah. And the film doesn't. And by the way, and there were many more uh, uh, to the film's credit. They mentioned this. There are many more agents like him that aren't really uh, uh, discussed um, or, or, or laid out in their full uh, damage and impact anyway. But so. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. No, we, that's no, interesting. It's a good disagreement here. Let's go. Go ahead, Rebecca. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's interesting because I mean, I could see it to your point, but for for people like me who you know just heard about Fred Fred Hampton on the sidelines and never really uh, were introduced to that when it comes to Black history or his story. What's interesting about that when I watched it, I literally was. I saw Fred Hampton being humanized for us. We looked at the snitch like, you know, in anger and uh, be mm -hmm. upset. Like, how can this have happened? Um, we were introduced to a lot of people were not introduced to Cointel Pro. A lot of people didn't know what that was. Now, after watching the movie, sometimes we're, we're so invested into the characters. We want to know what's real. Because even though they showed us those parts, I did get that feeling of, quote, oh, there is fluff here. There's some, there are some parts that are missing. But we wanted to, a lot of people went out and did the same thing that I did. When you watch... You know, when we go to the movie theaters, we are so invested in that two hours, but we want to know the truth. So we get to Google, we get to researching. And in mm. my research, because because of this film, I was able to go out and actually research and get the truth and start understanding more about Fred and just seeing like just how young he was. And like you said, how he was on the dossier of the feds um, since he was about 14 years old. So they always been on him. And it was more than just a love story, but it was good to see him humanized as well. Um, and, mm. you know, a lot of times when before that, when I heard of um, Fred, you know, from other people, it was like he was so radical. He was so radical. But just to see that he was a person was good, too. Right. Mm. Um, but it did force me to go out there and do the research and look at it for what it was and just look at the snitch as mm. like, yo, this is this this. Uh, there was so many other people in the game or in, in these organizations just like him. And I can't humanize this man because he know he was wrong just in his. Um, he was like the villain in the movie, just in his smile about all the things that he was doing. Psychopath. That's what mm. I got. Um, and. Yeah. So, um, but it's, it's, it's good to hear it from a different point of view as well. You raise a lot of good points. I'm sorry, my bad. Go ahead. 
Oh, oh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons I, I haven't watched it yet in fear of that it may be whitewashed and, mm. you know, I have my apprehensions. That's why I haven't watched it. I said tonight mm. I'm going to definitely watch it so I can know what's going on. But that's right. like, it, that's why it's taking me so long to watch it. Just the, the, the storytelling and from the perspective of who it's coming from. Don't mm. retell our, our history to benefit everybody else. You know, tell it like it really is. That's my mm-hmm. whole thing. So I will watch it tonight so I can make sure I know what it is. But like I said, I put it off for the past week and a half almost just because, like <laughs> I said, I'm sick of seeing whitewashed black movies. Honestly. Mm. <laughs> well, so in general, if I so very quickly in, in, in tribute to an old friend of mine and co-worker, uh, uh, Brother Vernon, I, I've developed a, a, a version of what I call the Vernon philosophy of black media avoidance. And it's it's really just a, a somewhat comedic way of looking at, you know, uh, of, of summarizing a lot of radical media and, and Africana theory and, and practice, which is just to say that we should be really critical given the context we're in and the the role media are meant to play in terms of propaganda, psychological warfare and managing public opinion. Uh, and the specific role that movies are meant to play. There's a really sp- uh, particular history that film is meant to play uh, uh, in performing functions of the state that, that uh, uh, is a history many of us are, are insufficient, myself included, in understanding. Mm-hmm. But, but the point I'm getting at is that um, uh, we shouldn't look for ourselves no oppressed group should look for themselves in commercial state national product uh, as much as we want to, as much as we're encouraged to, we should always, especially when we like it, be more critical of it. That said, I want to be proven wrong here. So, you know, I'm, I'm basing this on, on, you know, a number of different things and histories, but one example is for instance, we were often told when Spike Lee's Malcolm X came out back in the day that this was going to lead to some revolutionary return to Malcolm and his politics, which is unfortunately not what happened. Uh, we get the same thing, you know, I had a, a years ago had a, a beautiful but brilliant, a brief uh, exchange with with the the incredible MC Rhapsody and, and Ninth Wonder on Twitter, where where I was slightly critical of a, of a track that she did, where she was claiming it was an ode to to Betty Shabazz. But I said, but there's no reference to Betty or Malcolm or her politics in mm. the song, so so it's maybe you know a great track, a dope thing, you know. But to say it's an ode or a tribute to Betty is a little bit strong. So. Uh, 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 and, and, and Ninth Wonder's response was, but if you remember back in the day when Tribe put out the song with Steve Biko, we all went and learned about who Steve Biko was and, 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 and mm. became something else. And I, and I said at the time then, and I still disagree with that, that I think that that's not what happened. Uh, uh, so I don't <laughs> think that that's necessarily the case. So in other words, I'm saying that, Rebecca, I hope you are representative of a movement today that will prove me incorrect. And that movie oh, will to. join to. Fred Hampton Jr. <laughs> okay, good, good. Because here's, here's why. Support- Okay, go ahead. Go ahead I'm go sorry. Ahead. Finish, that, finish that thought, though. I don't mean to cut you off. Finish that thought. No, I just want to say that I want people to support the film and support Fred Hampton Jr. and, and the Hampton House. Yeah. And I want people to support yeah. uh, and, and study Fred Hampton's politics. And I want them to organize and build around the way that Fred Hampton w- would have uh, been organizing. Look, even we've heard from, uh, I've heard from, and we'll be doing interviews with soon enough, uh, with, with, with Mark Clark's family. And they're disappointed mm. in the way that this history and story is told because Mark Clark was killed that night, too. Uh, mm-hmm. And his story is often misrepresented represented as well. Uh, you know, so my point is, I hope people will engage deeply with what is not in the film uh, it, it, so so that it will have a, an impact that I have not seen historically. And I will be happy to be wrong in this in this one. Yes. Sorry, and and I think I think in this case, you you may be proven wrong, Professor, ah. Riddell, because um, even uh, Mark Clark, uh, that was mentioned. But anybody who watched this movie had to be compelled to go find out who he was, because right. even if it was just mentioned uh, uh, verbally, or just in passing uh, or just in description, I had to be like, I like I was looking at it in my mind mentally like stored it when I went to go research because I needed to know. We know when we're watching these these films, there are going to be parts that, of course, it's 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 the mainstream film industry. They're going to please them in some way by fluffing things, leaving out some stuff. And, you know, that's just what they do. We and and, and when we watch these movies, the older I've gotten, I've understood. And um, as a millennial, uh, a true millennial, I know that when we watch these things, it's our duty to go out and research and make sure that we're getting the information correctly. Or if it wasn't presented correctly, we're researching and having the conversations in spaces like Twitter and on Instagram and trying to make sure that we control the narrative. Um, And that's why we have these shows like Like It or Not, because we can have the conversation right here and start correcting and, and, and clearing up those things. But 
You're totally right. Like he wasn't presented in the movie, but if you did watch it, you know, it was my duty to go out and research and make sure, okay, where was he? What was his part in history? What was his part in in the movement and things of that sort, even in the other organizations that were mentioned, because they almost try to make it seem, and I will say in the movie, when he went out to uh, speak to the uh, the white terrorist group, uh, KKKs or whatever, um, uh, the white nationalist group, they, you know, even when he went out, they tried to, to me at that particular uh-huh. point, I was like, hmm, are they trying to humanize these folks here? Or, you know, because the feds uh-huh. to me or the feds, the police officers and them are just the same, you know, yeah. um, but, but, but I did, you know, it, it it's our duty after watching mm. those films to, um, change the narrative or correct it or come out and say, yeah, great product, but here's where you guys went wrong, those kind of things. Um, and to uh, educate ourselves, we can't just go off of, especially not in 2021, we mm. should not ever be just going off of what mainstream film industries and things like that, who are known Absolutely. to whitewash or who are known to leave let, out. We can't just be going off of that. Let, so let me, let me jump in there real quick, because uh, I know we, you, you got, you have classes and you have to, we don't have you for the whole episode. Um, but I, <laughs> I, I just I just I was 12 years old when Malcolm X came out. Now, everything prior to that point, you got you, everybody got to remember, like the 90s and the 80s, they were not particularly good for uh, mass movements. They were always they were always organizers. Shout out to everybody who 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 participated in organizing and being revolutionaries or radical during that period. But for the mainstream, it just it just wasn't it wasn't there. My experience with revolutionary movements came through, you know, some boycotts that were organized by black pastors in the cities that I grew up in and, and we participated. But when I was 12, I saw Malcolm X. Right. And and everything about that movie ignited the revolutionary in me. Then 1995, I was 15. Uh, the, the real, the, the Panther, not Black Panther, not, not the Marvel Panther, but Panther that was directed by Mario Van Peebles came out. And I, I know that movie line by line. That, that animates me to this day. Um, not caping on behalf of Hollywood, but, and actually just pivoting completely from that, I want to ask you, people who are seated in the middle of empire, who have been the victims of empire, Every time one of our revolutionaries jump up, brother, they kill us. And as a black man who's got that fire, it just is, I mean, anybody else, anybody who wants to take it to this government, I will gladly say on every episode, this government does not have the right to remain because it has abdicated its responsibility to us. If for no other reason, COVID-19 is a, it should be a death sentence for the ruling elite in this country as a cabal. They should have no authority over us. But brother, they kill us when we get out there with that revolutionary spirit. And I and I, I look at it. I look at it as not a, a problem, because if you have the spirit of a revolutionary, you you know, you're dead already. But perhaps people who are seated in the middle of empire and who have been the recipients of white supremacy and capitalism in the way that we black people have, perhaps Perhaps some people are just trying to do it a little differently and taking an approach saying that while we may not want to receive. It is warfare. It is class warfare and they got nuclear weapons. So perhaps we're looking at it in a way of how we want to approach it differently versus taking the standard route um, that is in all of our blood to do. Because you uh, you and I agree on this much. This government has abdicated its responsibility and has no right to lead us, even though they're still in power. First, I want to I want to double back because what you just said reminded me of what I saw you earlier say in your, your in your commentary on Rush Limbaugh, and I want to uh, second that. And uh, and I, because I'm also reminded this the, the, from the other day in the conversation I had that um, uh, one of his ideological uh, uh, ancestors or, or older brothers, Ronald Reagan. Mm. uh died during my wedding and and we raised a glass so (laughs) so um and 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 anybody that has an issue with that just needs to go back as you had done with rush limbaugh and look at the history of ronald reagan uh which could arguably be said to be far longer and worse and damaging Mm. uh and specific to black people in its damage Mm. um um, so anyway, I just wanted to echo that. I forgot to do that earlier. The other point that I would say very, you know, 
is is that this is sort of again my point about how I think we have to understand the role and function of media. That that the reason that uh, I think that uh, films like the ones you've mentioned have come out, and this one, which is a far more I think greater challenge, because unlike the the, the Van Peebles film, this film is I think much more well acted, well told, mm. well shot. Uh, well performed. Uh, so, as someone who is critical of its politics, uh, it's it's much more difficult to do because I watched it and was moved. I mean, I, I you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, mm-hmm. I I get it. Uh, yeah. uh, and I also get some of the the efforts being made around the film from people like Fred Jr. and and the, the Black Panther Cubs uh and mm. so on so i want to i want to support that even as i have issues with what i think are the politics of the film but my point is that the politics of the film are meant to to limit the revolutionary fervor and limit and, and, and in many ways maze walk us away from fred hampton's actual politics even as we're being given something that is meant to 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 seemingly oh, okay. uh, uh person. so the other point that yeah. i would also say to your point about they don't just kill the revolutionaries they also exile and imprison them for life which is why yeah. Again, if people are going to be moved by this film, then they have to go and watch COINTELPRO 101, the documentary now freely available from the Freedom Archives. They have to go and, and sign up with the National Jericho Movement and get involved with the political prisoner movement and start communicating with, you know, we can't just wear Asada Taught Me shirts and not be communicating with Sundiata Okoli, who's agree. locked up right up the road from me. We can't I be agree. talking about Fred Hampton and, and, and being excited about this movie and not talking about the fact that that mm. Pompeo and them just re re uh, you know lifted the assault uh, reassigned uh, rather the assault on Cuba and Assad right. Shakur uh, right. and Matulu Shakur is still locked up and Leonard Peltier is still locked up and David Gilbert for those who want white allies you know he's still locked up uh, and even the progressive white left don't talk about that so I mean you Come know on. like <laughs> so so they don't just kill us. They put Amen. us in prison and exile us uh, and then re- represent the stories of these folks absent their 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 politics. And that's the part that, oh. that frustrates me and concerns me. Uh, so, yes, I'm very appreciative that we can have this conversation uh, because, again, it, 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 uh, it is essential. It. We don't all have to yeah. agree, but we have to be able to have these yeah. conversations. And I do want to encourage people to to even in disagreeing with me, think more critically about their own relationship to these products and films and then maybe do what you all have said uh, and encourage and follow up and study and then I got more it. importantly organize around those ideas. I yeah. got it. I got it. Here's how we got to do this because you're absolutely right. I don't disagree. I, I don't disagree with you um, only to the extent of, of how media has changed and radicalized me. Hell, my own podcast radicalized me. I was about to get in some trouble this past summer messing around <laughs> with this government. Right. So media has a power to do the radicalization. But mm-hmm. if it's insufficient, we got to send them to class. We got to send them to listen to people like you who fill in the gaps, who let us see the shortcomings of even even like my show. Right. Like or, or, or the movies or whatever, whatever we do in media, it cannot stop there. It has to be. And maybe you'll get a better experience if you go to Bethune Cookman University and get that kind of education <laughs> as opposed to right. Morgan State oh, or as opposed Jesus. to FAMU. They just became but, a university, but, but okay. But, <laughs> yes, we did. But, <laughs> but the fa- I think we can agree there that it cannot be the sum total of your education. <laughs> you got to sit and listen to folks like Professor Shout Jared out to Ball. Morgan State. <laughs> Shout out to Professor. Professor. Thank you so much, man. I am always honored to have you on, always honored for you to push me and to challenge us. And I'm always pushed back. But I love your work and everybody. Absolutely. You got to start by reading his book, The Myth and Propaganda of Black Buying Power, because it, it absolutely contributed to my way of thinking. So thank you, Professor. Thank, Thank you very you. much for having me. I really appreciate it. And, and uh, shout out to you and your whole crew and your audience. And again, even the book, by the way, starts off with a reference to Fred Hampton and, and Jay-Z. Yeah. So, so yeah. I definitely so got to check that there. out. Go yeah. download yeah. it. Thanks, I everybody. mix what I like. And, and, and I mix what I like dot org. And as I've been signing off in my own broadcast for almost 20 years now, as Fred Hampton used to say to you, we say peace if you're willing to fight for it. So peace, mm. everybody. And thank you very much again for having me this morning. I love that. Absolutely. Right. Thank you James, so much, you got sir. something. You got something soulful over there. Give us something. We need something to go to the break on. I we'll do. come back. We have a lot more of Like It or Not. You left me stranded. Looking like a fool. Oh, those nights of 
Shout out to Professor Jared Ball. Thank you so much again for joining us today, this morning. It was awesome, awesome, awesome. Now make sure that you go download that book as quickly as possible. I told you. <laughs> Y'all saying something soulful. I got plenty of that. <laughs> don't try, try, don't, don't try to I got you. <laughs> Shout out to everybody in the chat room. Make sure that you are dropping those likes, y'all. We appreciate y'all being here, y'all. I'm still here. My camera battery died like it always does. I don't know how it's plugged in, but it died. Don't yeah. Try, try. Don't, don't so enjoy the so sultry sounds as I change the battery. that you do that make sure you download the like it or not app via voices and you can search voices by access Sprout or point your cell phone at the qr code on the screen even when it don't fit right she be calling on a monday wanna meet on tuesday asking me to fix me up real nice she can wait until the weekend she wants off the deep end telling me to bring the stuff i like i don't want to let her down so i'm telling her yes though i'm kind of down from the pain in my chest but i'm putting her to sign now i'm gonna feel her yeah, right I hear. Now. happy from the stuff i know she likes i've been trying my luck Every day of the week, yeah When my baby words up hey. Always down every week, yeah no And don't forget, like I said, to make sure That you search for voices by Action Sprout Or point your cell phone camera at the QR code And follow the URL This is the Voices app where you can follow Like It or Not And also upload any pictures, videos Or whatever it is for us to share on air And yes, you could be possible to get showcased and everything And be on the screen with us So make sure that you get that downloaded Use the code 213-756 213-756, y'all The voice is out Make sure you get it downloaded Slept until it's Thursday She don't want to leave me Not just yet Told me all about us Shout out to everybody That's in the chat room Checking us out, y'all Make sure that you hit that like button Make sure you hit that like button broke my heart In a million ways But I'm putting that aside now I'ma feel alright now Happy just as long as she's with me I've been trying my life Every day of the week, yeah When my baby works out Always down every week, yeah No, 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 no 
Yes, yes. She can't get enough. She's slipping through the cracks. Come up, she know what's up. What's up? Yeah, can't get enough. Yeah, even when it don't fit. No, 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 no. I still wanna party with her. Yeah, yeah. Even if it don't feel right. Shout out to everybody that's in the Lions Den. Appreciate y'all for being here. Did you say like the old lady? Right. No, because I feel like, you know, like Mary J. Blige <laughs> has her one move. Hey, bro. You know I mean? bro let, me, let me tell you something. Yeah. James, you're going to have to send me that first track you played going to break. That was some soulful stuff, man. Who was that? Oh, yeah. Uh, let me see. That, that bro, was. Whatever that was. The shame is on you. The devil sway. Oh. I like that. Send that to me too. I yeah. need that. Yeah. I need all I like that. that. I'm going to listen to that as soon as it's up. Shout out again to Professor Jerry Ball. Love you, brother. Appreciate you always coming on and yes. and, and, and speaking truth to power. Um, we School like was in that? session for me. I like that. That was a good. It, that was it was for me it. too. Yeah. yeah. And, like, and, it, and it's always. Again, and I'm just like, bro, I'm listening, bro. <laughs> yeah. Good and stuff it's, right it's here, always man. good. Yeah. It's always good for us. And you guys know I've been saying this from the beginning of. Um, this whole show thing, like it's always good. It's important that we have a place where we disagree. I mean, mm. like it's important that, you know, I can tell we him how disagree. I feel. Yeah. I'm talking <laughs> about me. Cause when I disagreed with him saying that, you know, the, the movie had its position and I'm like, yeah. but we also have our position as yeah. well when these movies come out, because I can tell you one thing for me, Fred Hampton um, was somebody that I heard about Mm. Um, mentioned and I know you know I went to Florida a and University these are people that we we oh we celebrated but never really got into the context and I had a very radical like him which I absolutely love but a very positively radical um, yeah. uh, African American studies teacher who I feel like I didn't have yeah. much time with because it was he, he gave us so much information and I learned so much but um, after watching that movie, I made sure I applied what I learned at my historical university. Girl, um, we don't care and, about no family. But, but, but no, no, <laughs> but I, I applied what I learned there. And, you know, make sure when you are watching this movie, especially as a black person, but, you know, you go out there and you do your research. But that's what the yeah. great thing about these platforms, because if you go on right. Twitter, they will be like, uh, this was wrong. This was wrong because this is really what happened. Here's why I know what happened. Here's the reference why it happened. And this right. is why we should be letting our people know what happened. Happen. We always right. correct it. And that's yeah. what I love about. Um, um, I'll tell you this much, spaces. though. I'll tell you this much. I would have gladly spent my student loan money in his classes. Yes, so, I loved it. I felt like students. That's, that's why I'm like, I need to read yeah. that book ASAP on yeah. imixwholike.org. I definitely need to go read that book. I mix Honestly, what I like. I mix what I like. I mix, I mix what, what I like. Yeah. And, and yeah. I, I definitely need to go on there because because that is a a conversation because when we I told you I play about Clubhouse and how they mm -hmm. be on Clubhouse, but Talk that's literally yeah, that's literally start how they a business are. with your stimulus check. I gotta or buy, use I gotta your five dollars and make that into cheddar for the cheeseburger. <laughs> you need to make you know you need to make money. Like they're so clever with their words, but they don't understand that this was a systemic thing that was taught to you. Mm. And we have to start understanding that there's there, there are levels to this thing. Well, there are I love I thing. love the context. Like the the con the proper context to understand wealth in this country was that it was stolen. Mm -hmm. It was stolen, period. And it's currently white folks don't bomb. know the, the the struggle for real. And look, and y'all might get mad with me when I say this, and I, I hear you guys, but understand, the system was created for you guys to prosper on mm -hmm. each level. You might be the most prosperous poor person. You might be the mm -hmm. most compared to a black person. They want us down at every single level. That's why we know of whole mm -hmm. neighborhoods, whole cities being bombed when we we're flourishing mm -hmm. because it was set up. Mm. But, hey, and yeah. real, real quick, and the people can hear can me they right hear now. You? Yeah. Okay. Okay. As much as people want to sound smart, talking about starting a business with your your uh, stimulus, <laughs> stimulus check, check, I can tell you for a fact, it's gonna cost you more than six hundred dollars to to, <laughs> to get into any kind of prospering business. So so y'all can say that. Man. Yes. Right. right. Good. Let's talk about <laughs> it. Every, this, this, listen, if all you got is six hundred dollars, see this way. Who was saying this? There's somebody in our orbit who's been saying like, it, 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 when people don't have a lot. 
It makes sense for them to go and do whatever the hell they want to do. I'm sorry. You are not going to tell me that the pathway out of poverty in this country as a black person is for me to save my dimes when I ain't got no dimes to begin with. So if I do decide to take my money and go buy something that makes me feel good in this oppressive system, leave us the hell alone. Because unless you're talking about taking the wealth of the wicked and giving it to the just, you ain't talking about nothing. Nothing. Y'all see, see, this, this is this, this, this is why I always you started Jared, the conversation, with, Ben. Listen, with Jerry, I know with Jerry, I'm always like, and I understand, I understand, like there are, there are, there are substantive differences in our approach to the revolution, right? But the thing for me is like, bro, man, it is inside of every single one of us, and the only question is, is to what degree have we had to suppress it in order to survive the United States of America? I'm not good at suppressing it anymore. Rebecca, give me some black joy, please. please. So, all right. I don't even know what's coming up next, but I do know that we've you know, been throwing a list of them for a while now, and our producers yeah. have been doing a really good job in compiling them up for us. So just surprise us with what we have. Let's start playing something <laughs> real quick. Lighten up the mood. Let's see. Uh, uh, hey. uh, 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 come on. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. This is Bust the Buzz. Love it. Yeah. Hey. Bust the vibe. Yeah, what, the what they just dancing? Yeah, that's why. Because they time. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's time to you feel. Feeling it and it's giving it to you. Come on. 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 Been so old, Jesus Christ. Well, yeah, been so old. Listen, I got to. No, no. I used to. I used to turn over. I used to turn over real quick. I used to turn over real quick in the night, like just like that. And then one night, I was like, "Oh my God, I almost died." So yeah, I'm old. what's the next? What's the next one? <laughs> Eating your favorite fast food burgers. The Big Mac is extremely satisfying. Um, from the double patties, the onions, the pickles, the special sauce, which right, isn't dude. really special sauce. It's, it's his just voice. Thousand Island dressing, but fuck it, let him lie to us. It's very good. Oh, I like it. Who the did? Whopper is like the papa yeah, of the fast guys. food game for some reason. I know it's weird, but that's how I feel. Um, that flame broiled flavor for some right, reason boy. really just hits me in the heart, and I feel like it's home. I've never seen <laughs> a Rallies or Checkers employee smile, and I feel like it translates to their food. Have you ever seen a Rallies or Checkers employee <laughs> smile? <laughs> I'll wait. Five Guys is the epitome of pick something you do right and stick with it. They only have like four items on the menu and those random ass <laughs> peanuts, but damn it, it all smacks. Solid. In and Out Burger is extremely voice. overrated, and stop bringing it up in my comments. You're not gonna find anything better than a baconator. That's why they keep coming out with more baconator stuff. Ba yeah. The baconator. I'm glad we on. I haven't had any fat. Baconator uh, well, no, Pringles. No, 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 let me stop. Did you say baconator Pringles? I haven't. That's what he I had on that really screen had. up there. He said baconator Pringles. Oh, the baconator. Chick Fil A hey. on there. Was Chick Fil A on there? Those are just burgers. Not on burgers. burgers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not oh, on Oh, burger. Well, I don't eat burgers. Yeah. I don't eat burgers or fries unless uh, they're sweet You don't potato eat fries. french fries? Oh, okay. No, I don't. Mm. Really? I would say 90% 90 of don't. the weight I got on me that I got to lose is from french fries. And it's fries. not, it's not about one? watching fries, my figure. Man. I just don't like the texture. French fries, bro. Oh. I don't like the texture of, um, of the burger. <laughs> Give me all the, the fries. Oh. All the fries. Right. I've just never, since I was younger, I've just never been a burger person. And um, I've never been a fries person. I mean, I've been de eating Dili, Sospa, and oh, Yun my all my whole damn life. So it's like, when I, let me uh, tell you guys, okay. my first time eating, my first, look, my first time eating out was literally um, being free from, and I'm not saying being free like a bad thing, but being able to go and have something for real outside of Haitian food was when I was going off to college. I mm. went to Taco Bell for the first time. Oh, no, no. You started too hard. 
No, I was talking about fucking, and I no, I was addicted. Then my friend took me to um Ooh. look, Dina, if you're watching, I'm trying to remember. She took me to one of these places where they had like hot dogs. I think it was like Sonics, you know, they, they oh, yeah. ate yeah, yeah. Whatever it was. Oh, yeah. And I loved it. And then I just got over it. Cause but I loved it because I never had those type of meals. Then uh -huh. going to the calf and eating on fried chicken Wednesdays, all of that, it it was just so good. And then I got so tired of all that food, but I never really was a burger person. We never were introduced to that that kind mm -hmm. of um, it's kind of food. Exactly. If you Let go, me tell if you, you something. Real dude. food all your life, the Taco Bell. I, I, know, I always too hardcore. wanted That's those too hardcore. tacos. Everybody talked about them. We saw the little Chihuahua in the commercials. Yeah. I always wanted it. I always wanted it. But where's um, the best burger? Where's the okay, best burger okay, for you, okay, James? Ben. I see <laughs> you, Ben. I see you. You saw what I just did. Yeah, I, I saw that. That's kind of, I like that. Uh, as good as, but I mean, yeah, the, why not, right? I, I, like I want to see what why he not? did too. Lion I don't like that I'm not, yeah. in, I'm not in it. Lion Force, it's in the, it's in the YouTube chat room. Sorry. I, yeah, I just YouTube chat. <laughs> well, that's all I, I mean, I was totally listening <laughs> to you, Rebecca. I totally, this is why I want to ask like, what is y'all's favorite burger then? Like, where, James, where's your first favorite burger? Uh, five Guys. Okay. Like, big sloppy ass Five Guys burger. I love okay. it. Okay. I got yeah. one for y'all. Nobody's had it. Nobody's had it unless you've lived in a city called Brookhaven, Mississippi. There was something called the C store, the corner store, right? They literally have the best burger I have had in the 40 years of my existence. It is, it is like, it, it makes the Whopper seem like generic trash compared to the authenticity <laughs> of this burger. The C store in Brookhaven, Mississippi, just around the corner from the projects. Y'all know where it's at. Go eat it. Next video. <laughs> <laughs> Next video. Give your kid an empty plate and see how they react. <laughs> Mom. Why do they do that to this baby? What you mean? I'm hungry now. <laughs> I'm starving. Oh my God, y'all. Oh no. I'm trying the to wait baby. to meet the That's baby. Me. Why they do that to the baby? That's me when my man don't feed me. Mom, what happened? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. Where's the food? That's okay. Oh, no, it's not. I'm gonna go get your food right now. Oh, don't play with the baby Ow. like that. Oh, oh, I want one. the baby. Why they do that I with the baby? One. Me too. I want one too. Oh, I, I want got one three. Too. Right, Rebecca. I, have. I, want I do. <laughs> I'm gonna Look. loan out. Y'all get y'all. Y'all get y'all vaccinations, got, and I'm gonna loan them out. Bro, they already got personalities, bro. You know, <laughs> you know, they already got personalities. They, they, oh, they you, 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 you need, a, you need to mold. You want to mold your own. I, I want to create yeah. and mold mine. Okay. You yes. know, yes. Okay. <laughs> oh man, we we got one more. Let's check this last one before we get out of here. Oh, wait a minute. No, she. Whoa, well, no, she lost it there at the end. She lost, the, she lost the plot at the end. I told you, listen, I mean, the quarantine got us a little crazy. But listen, full concerts in the shower. Yes. Full concerts. Right, yeah. We're cleaning up the kitchen. Full concerts in the car. Full uh, concerts, right. okay? Full concerts. Hey, yeah, I, in, in my car, I'll be City Girls, Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, Judge Man. I'll be all of that. Mm. <laughs> Hey, bro. I mean, no, 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 listen. I, okay, I, we're back. What you got? Hey, dude. What's I on your playlist? I the church and, uh -huh. um, you know, be singing up something. Get right, church. And just be and going let's in. let's go home. Then I'll, yeah. then I'll yeah. go into some Neo Soul. And then I'll go into all my ratchet songs. Like, eh. Then I go into <laughs> Compa. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm, I'm a little different, but I'm not that different. I start off with some news. Uh, it's just, I don't know why. My, my dad used to always listen to NPR, so I'm addicted to it. But then I changed to some jazz. But then I do go. And then I do go. I do a little bit of gospel but as soon as i'm done with kirk franklin megan the stallion is playing for the rest of the day so 
There we go, James. You and me got Megan Thee Stallion in the comment for sure. Right. Make, I'm, I'm I like, sure. but I, I, see, I, I like I the DJ all my parties. I know they get tired of Megan Thee Stallion because it's all a uh, No, we don't. I no, like don't. the male. I like the old male trap music. I mean, I love my girls. So I listen to all my girls. I like City Girls. I like um, yeah, Megan Thee yeah. Stallion. I like, I and there, there are some. But I like to go when, when I go back. I go to Trina. You know, I go to all, all them old. Yes. Ones. I go. I even yeah. go to Foxy Brown. I go to Lil Kim. I listen oh, to yeah. all them. But yeah. it's something yeah. about when I go to the future. The future. Like when future my oh I love it I love Pluto I love um thug a thug you know what I'm saying like that back in the days Lil Wayne listen oh, when man. I put that on can't um, tell me nothing speaking of uh shout out to one of our producers Max today's his birthday everybody Ooh, show Max some love happy birthday in the Max, Max. Like, happy doing birthday, great Max. work behind the scenes we yes. appreciate you brother uh shout out to everyone in the chat rooms um I had a proposition like everybody start putting these lions up and I'm like wow that's dope but then I thought about um and, and Rebecca I know you're a real millennial I'm, I'm just kind of like an elder millennial and really a Gen Xer um but right. you won't get this reference but shout out to the Lion Force in the chat room. That's what we, I think we should go with, the Lion Force. And uh, if you know where it's from, you just know where it's from. Rebecca, we'll let you find you know out where it's from. from. Is it from the movie Cats? <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on Lion Market or Not this morning. Um, we James thank you so in much. Your hands. We will see you in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's in your hands. Give us the music. Love you guys. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Dun, bum, ba, dun, 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 dun. You should get that, that track. <laughs> All right, here that? we go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love y'all. <laughs> Take care, everybody. I could really use a change of scene. Shout out to everybody that joined us today. I can't even talk anymore. Y'all mess me up. Shout out to everybody that joined us this morning, y'all. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much again to Congressman Ro Connor for joining and also Professor Jerry Ball. Enjoyed you on the show and you're welcome back anytime. And also, everyone, make sure that you download the Voices app and follow Like It or Not. That way you can send us anything, upload us videos, pictures, questions, or whatever it is that you may have. Have and stay in the know whenever like it or not is going down, y'all. So make sure that you scan the QR codes that's on your screen or search Voices by Action Sprout in your perspective app store. Make sure that you use group code 213756 to get into our group, y'all. Like it or not. You prove to me yeah. that rising to the top was my destiny. Yeah. Somebody in the chat room said Thundercats. But I'm still fly. I'm still fly. I know. You know, I'm not opposed to it. But Lion Force, if you don't know, is from Voltron. If you don't know, Voltron. It could all be words. I could be a hater like you. It could Make sure that y'all hit that like button, y'all. Mama, I appreciate that. You know, I try to bring y'all some new music because I'm sure that y'all get tired of the same old, same old. But some of that old stuff still go hard too, so don't worry, all of them will be incorporated next week. I'm free. Can't nobody take me here and now. It's my time to grind it out. And if you have time today, the Mars rover is landing on Mars, I think, very soon. Maybe somebody on another planet can come and beam my ass out of here. Oh, Earth is ghetto. I want to leave.
This track is still fly by Rumble Day. You do a search on YouTube, it still pull up on there. Poppy, y'all. You know what? I, I feel bad. My dad is always there with my mom watching. So shout out to my dad that's watching. Senior Andrew, love you, daddy. Seems brighter now than before. I don't know why I feel this way, but every time I hear your name, all my worries disappear. Yeah, it's all because of you. You know, I love the pride for the simple fact that the pride is what our marching band was called at Bethune Cookman University. So the pride will always be there. Because <laughs> I don't guarantee to show up and show out. I don't know if you feel the same, but every time I hear your name, my worries disappear. It's all because of Everybody that just make sure that you hit that like button. You make my dreams come true, true. Yes, Got one more track for y'all to throw back, and of course, a favorite. Why are you trying to play me? Telling me I'm crazy. Trying to put me wrong in every fight. Knowing that I'm right. Why are you trying to wreck me? Always wanna check me Wanna call me out in front of friends Careful where you tread before this sends You love me and I love you But butting heads is what we do Bullheaded, stubborn Wild, crazy lovers You love me and I love you Why can't we just match the two? Why we get so mean Light the match I'm kerosene Like that, join the pride, like it or not. <laughs> you love me and I love you, but but in hands is what we do. You're welcome, Angela. Hey man, make sure that saw hitting that like button on the way out. Shout out to Chuck Diesel, we see you. Why can't we one lost spirit? I got you tomorrow, okay? You on this is fire by Yajit Attila, but I think her real name is actually Misty. Susan, good morning. Why you trying to play me? Telling me I'm crazy. Sitting on the other side of me. Always cross-examining. Don't you think it's silly? Why won't you just trust me? Why can't you just look me in the eye? And no, I never lie. Why you trying to play me? I appreciate that, Miss New Room. Me wrong in every fight, knowing that I'm right. Why are you trying to wreck me? You always want to check me. The universe provides balance. Hell, Wildcats. The pride. You you now, hey, you're quite love, welcome. But, but in hands is what we do. Bullheaded, mm. stubborn, mm. wild, crazy lovers. You love me and oh, I love you. I got some.
many Why ideas, man. This is crazy. Why we get so many All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for your boy James Bubba Williams, better known as DJ Exclusive, y'all. Corporate America is calling my name once again, and they have been calling me a lot all week long. So let's get this thing going so Bubba doesn't have to do it anymore. <laughs> hey, make sure that you follow, like, subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff so you know when liking or not is always going down. And make sure that you get the Voices app downloaded uh, so you can send your information, like your pictures, your videos, and just show what you're going through at the time. You know, we like to connect with you the people because we love you all right make sure that you have a great day enjoy yourselves be happy be merry be fruitful be all of that be everything that you want to be okay love y'all we mean it like it or not we out and we'll see you in the morning deuces